to Quilt Market. I'm Tula Pink. This is what I do. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, I mean, obviously as a fabric designer, you love every line you do, otherwise you wouldn't do it, right? Like, I don't ever put out a line and go, well, that one was kind of crappy, but maybe no one will notice. <laughs> but every once in a while, you come out with something that you just know tells your story better than anything you've ever done before, right? And this is this line for me. And it's why there's so many samples, because I literally couldn't stop. So the significance of this new fabric line, Slow and Steady, is that it's my 20th fabric collection. So as a, thank you. So I have now, I have 20 fabric collections. I've been doing this just about 10 years now. And so with the 20th collection, it being a milestone and it being really important to me, I really wanted to tell, sort of for the first time in fabric, I mean, I've told the story of Queen Elizabeth and Marie Antoinette and a cheeky little frog with a fly in his belly. And I've told all these other stories. Some were funny, some were historical, but I felt like with a milestone like this, it was maybe more important to tell my own story for once, because I think that my story is relatively universal, right? So in terms of you get up every day, you work as hard as you can, trying to achieve something that you saw in your mind that you know you can make real if you just work hard enough. That's what this is for me. I, my very first quote market, I was like 17 or whatever it was. I was here with my mom when she had a shop and I met this like six foot tall blonde Amazon warrior named Amy Butler. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked by her booth about six times, but I couldn't get the courage to go in, right? So I just kept walking by and walking by it, and finally she's like, um, you can come in, you know? <laughs> and I was like, okay. But I left that quote market and I thought, that's a job? I wanna do that job, right? <laughs> And so I started designing a fabric collection, what I thought I would want to use, and I was going to print it in my garage and all this stuff, and it quickly became a little bit more than I could handle with my one semester of printmaking that I took in college. Um, so I sent it out, and it became a fabric collection, my very first fabric collection called Full Moon Forest. Full Moon Forest sold about 120 yards total. <laughs> so it was a runaway hit. Um, but, and that's what I built on. And so I, you know, I still get at Quilt Market, standing in my booth in front of my fabrics, you know, I still get today people coming up to my booth going, oh, this is great for our first collection. And I'm like, thanks. <laughs> go away. <laughs> um, but so, and so that's what it's been. And it's, and I don't know what the perception of, of my career in fabric has been, but from my side, it's been slow and steady. It's been doing a little bit better with every collection, working a little bit harder on every collection, listening to what all the retailers needs, what the consumers are after, and trying to incorporate that little by little in every collection over now almost 560 prints. So thank you for those who clap quietly. I respect that. Um, but so that's what Slow and Steady is. It's my story. And all of us, I think, at some times in our lives, whether it was at work, whether it was building a quilt shop, whether it was becoming an expert long arm quilter, no matter what it is, whether it's becoming a great mom, it doesn't matter what it is. I think we've all had a dream about something and chipped away at it slowly until we felt like we'd achieved it, and then still kept going. And that's what this line is about, at its core. It's about trying really, really hard and loving what you do more than anything else in the world, right? We can all relate to that on some level. Um, so that's where it started. That's sort of the emotional backstory, and then it gets funnier from there. <laughs> but and on another level, the story of um, the tortoise and the hare. So it's from Aesop's Fables, old story, the tortoise and the hare, about a very, very boastful rabbit with a huge ego who says, I cannot run anybody, and the turtle goes, well, I think I can race you. 
And the tortoise challenges him to a race, and by sheer will and not giving up, wins the race while the hare is napping, because he thinks it'll be so easy to beat the turtle that he doesn't even have to try hard. So it's really a line about trying. And, um, and also about, you know, this is kind of a weird, heady experience, this fabric design thing. You know, like all of you are sitting here looking at me like I'm super special, which I think I am, and my family reminds me that I'm not, which is nice of them. Um, but you know, it's about that too. It's about not letting your sort of ego get in front of what you do. At the end of the day, I love to draw. I love to put those drawings on fabric in color. I like to take those fabrics and make them into anything I can think of. I mean, what's more magical than that? It's like I kind of, do you ever feel really bad for people who don't sew? Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> you buy stuff? That's cute. Um, that's sweet. Mary well. Like always, we have three colorways. We have sort of our brighter pinky orangey colorway, the royal blue and aqua colorway, and some navies in there too. And then, so if anybody watched my video series on QNN, I say two things in that video series that I will never ever do, black and domestic <coughs> animals. Uh -huh. So here's the black. <laughs> It was like I watched that, and then it was all I could think of. <laughs> so here's the black, watch for domestic animals in the next year. Um, and so what we have is the fabrics tell the story piece by piece, right? And in your catalog, you can see, um, I've actually designed the catalog to be the story, slow and steady, in its entirety, um, so that you can read through the story, so it kind of works like a little, like a storybook. And you can read through the story of the tortoise and the hare while the pictures of the fabric illustrate each part of the story. So that you can kind of see what I was thinking when I went from one piece to the, ne the next, why I used it, and why I went with those designs. So the first piece is the tortoise. And he's sort of buried in this little flower. It's just a precious angel in a little flower bud of some kind. And then this little piece, one of my sort of blender pieces, is the actual tortoise shell. And those of you who've been with me for a while will recognize this piece from Neptune, recolored. Um, so this, I needed sort of a larger dot, you know? It's like I'm trying to fulfill my needs of my quilt while till, still telling my story. So this piece is like all the little suns shining down on our little racing guys having a good time. And then we have the rabbit. He's sort of right here. And I specifically designed this piece to sort of riff off my very, very first fabric that I ever designed, which is the owl. So the Full Moon Forest Owl, which I hear you can buy on eBay for like $1,000 <laughs> for like a fat quarter or something. <laughs> I have a fat quarter of it. You can have it. Um, but so it's sort of in that same vein. So I'm sort of trying to talk about, it's my 20th collection. I'm talk, talking about where I've come from, trying to incorporate everything I've learned over 500 plus prints, right? Um, then this guy, there's a little snail in here, and this piece is called Pit Crew. <laughs> Thank you. I like it when people get my jokes. Um, so this is the snail, he's the tortoise's pit crew, so you know, when he comes in, takes his break, gets his water, you know, gets his nails polished up so that he can win the race. It's super important. Um, this little piece here is called track flags. So you know like in a, like NASCAR races? You all know what NASCAR is, don't you? <laughs> you know what beer nuts are too, just admit it, we're all over it. Um, but so, you know, they put up different flags to indicate different parts of the race, yeah. So, I thought that was really clever at one point in time. Um, and so this piece here, this is called Grandstand. So this is all the little animals watching the race. And you'll, 
you may notice that in here is a little representation of many of the different lines I've done through my career. So there's a squirrel, a raccoon, a bear, which was in Moonshine. There's, what else is in there? There's a bird. There's a hedgehog, which I've never done, but it just really fit that space super good. So he made, he made an appearance. But so this is sort of like representing all the different animals I've done through the lines throughout the years. I was really tempted to put a little Queen Elizabeth sitting on a branch, but I couldn't really make that work. Um, and then this is probably one of my favorite pieces in the line. Um, and if you look really closely and you can see it in your catalog, it says, I'm a winner. Because we're all winners! <laughs> and it says, I'm a winner, but you know that when the fabric's in your hands, I'm not talking about me. I hope everybody's clear on that. It wasn't like, a, I want. It doesn't say Tula's a winner. It says, I'm a winner. When you have it, that's your I'm, right? There was like a serious discussion about this in the studio when I was designing it. Should it be I'm a winner or you're a winner? Are people going to think I think I'm a winner? And then my mom goes, but you do. <laughs> so anyway, so those are the main prints in the line. What we're also releasing um, in sort of to commemorate the 20th collection is this bundle and it's the Hashtag TBT throwback Tula bundle. I didn't come up with that, um, but it's really cute. Um, but what it is, is it's 20 fat quarters <coughs> over many different lines, all in one bundle to create one rainbow. So there's a little bit of a lot of different fabrics in this bundle, and they're a limited quantity. So they made a, they made a batch of them. That's what they've got, so go order it if you want it. And if you don't, just don't tell me that. Tell me you ordered it like everyone does. And it'll make me much happier. So, we have tons of tons of stuff for this line. There's, of course, all the standard bundles that we always do. So there's the fat quarters, the 10 inch squares, the five inch squares, the design rolls with the two and a half inch strips. We've also introduced this time, which is first for me, is the hexagon packs. Yes which are totally, totally fun. And I have a little sample of that in here for you, too. Um, I also wanted to let you know that in celebration of the 20th line, we've actually had made up numbered, limited edition numbered sets of gold-plated enamel pins that we'll be selling out of the booth. First come, first serve. When they're gone, they're gone, and that's it. So um, come to the booth, 2716 and pick those up, the earlier the better, um, because I keep uh, taking them for my own outfits, <laughs> so I would get on that. Um, so we've got the new bundles, the throwback Tula bundles, which we'll have a, a limited quantity of. We have the regular bundles of Slow and Steady, and then we have a lot of stuff to show you for this market. So I actually made bags for the first time, if anybody knows me, they know I don't do that. I'm a quilter through and through. I don't make clothes. None of this ever gets measured for any reason. Um, it will shatter my, my personal illusion. Um, but so I actually got on this bag making tip and made quite a few bags. And a lot of the information is in your catalog. I try to put as much of like where the pattern's from, who writes it, um, in the catalog for you. And so let's just start going through some of that stuff. So these, this is all in the sort of black and gray colorway. I think it's called, oh yeah, I named all my colorways after 7-Eleven slushy flavors. <laughs> um, so this is the strawberry kiwi, which is my personal favorite. Uh, if you guys wanna <coughs> Um, so we did. We have the camera bags. These are from So Sweetness, Sarah Lawson's patterns, um, and these are really, really great camera bags. I actually use them for a whole bunch of stuff. I use them for projector parts and all kinds of things. Were you gonna walk on, or we're just gonna set them up? <laughs> model, them. model them down the aisle. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then out of the the blue colorway. So this is a little bit bluer than I've ever done before. Usually I do sort of more of a navy blue, 
but I live in Kansas City and the Royals won the World Series. Ooh. And Royal Blue is now in my life, because um, that's how the world works. Um, so we've got these bags are also from Sarah Lawson's patterns, So Sweetness patterns. Um, and this one, this duffel is brand new that she made because I told her I needed one. I don't think that's why she made it, but I did tell her that and then it did materialize. So I'm going to go with that theory. Um, so we have these guys. And then her little double zipper pouches. These are really cool. They're just two fat quarters. Make these. And they have... Uh, two zippers, so a zipper on each side, which is kind of cool for like separating things. If you like to segregate your pens and pencils, I don't know, maybe you're into that. <laughs> um, and then I made this bag myself. Thank you. Thank you. I've been sewing for 22 years and I still expect an applause when I make something myself. So I appreciate that, everyone. Thank you. So this is a Patterns by Annie pattern. Um, it's the travel duffel bag, and this is the carry-on travel bag, also a Patterns by Annie bag. Um, and I, sh I believe I put the information for that in your catalog so that you have those pattern that pattern information. Um, and then this is also a Sarah Lawson So Sweetness <coughs> bag. This is her aeroplane bag. Um, that she put leather straps on, super cute. And then these are her train case travel bags, which I actually use like all the time, exclusively. If you wanna come to my hotel room, you'll see them on my bathroom, but don't come to my hotel room, I won't let you in. <laughs> so there's those guys. And the quilts. So one thing we're doing for the 20th collection that I'm really excited about is a pre-packaged quilt kit. So here's the box, it's going to be super cute, it doesn't have anything in it yet because we just finished it. But here, oh all of them come up. So this is called, this quilt's called Fandango. And this is the packaged quilt. So this is the kit quilt that Free Spirit's selling in the box. And it comes with everything that you see on the front, so all the fabrics in the quilt, plus the binding. <coughs> the only thing it doesn't come with is the backing, but since you all already carry all my white backings, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, you will have that already, so you're good to go. Um, but it's a really, really pretty quilt. And what I found is the easier quilts are better for free patterns, and when people want to invest in a quilt, they want something more at an intermediate level. So that's what we were trying to hit, is that sort of intermediate piecing level because none of the circles are actually complete circles. They're all done in eight circles. So that curve is actually really shallow and really manageable. Um, and yes, it takes more time than like a turning 20 quilt, <laughs> but, but what doesn't? Um, <laughs> is it paper piece at all or just templates? It is paper piece. Okay. Yes, okay. there's no templates. I think it's all just paper. Well, no, the center circle is a template. Okay. Um, but it's minimal, because I yeah. think you cut like 16 of those okay. center circles. And then the rest is just, the fans are just paper pieced. I was really shocked at actually how quickly it went together. I've like sat down to like do that, you know, full winter hibernation sewing. And it took me probably a day and a half to piece the whole thing. And I mean like a solid day and a half, not like a day and a half where I go to lunch with friends and then go grab coffee and then watch like Game of Thrones for three hours. I mean like a real day and a half, yeah. Um, so this little guy here, this is made with the hexagon packs. So I took two hexagon packs to make the center and then a quarter yard of three solids. And that's it. And it is a great little baby quilt. And it is, I English paper pieced it, so I hand sewed it because I can't help myself, but um, there, I've seen some really good tutorials online <coughs> lately about how to machine sew hexagons, especially at that size. And because these are all pre-cut, where's the little, oh here. And then I just use the cardboard that comes in the pack as the template to cut my remaining 
hexagons out of the solids. It went together yeah. super quick. Um, but it's like a really great little baby quilt, um, for sure, or a wall hanging. And then, because I love this line, and you so much, except for Pam Matthews, I have so many free quilts, it's stupid for this line, because I couldn't stop sewing. I couldn't stop making stuff. So what I wanted to do with the quilts is do, I wanted to do one quilt that represented the tortoise and one that represented the hare. So this one is for the tortoise and it's all heart. And then I have the, I'll hold this one And then just a really simple star quilt because the hair is all ego. <laughs> And this one is literally made with a fat quarter bundle. One fat quarter for the background, one for the star, done. It's really quick to put together, really easy to show in a store, really easy to photograph, tons of rainbows. Hold your arms up, you can do it, dude. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay. Um, I also want to point out how awesome the orange backing looks with this line. Yeah, that really does match. It looks good, right? Yeah. It's almost like yeah. it did it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other free pattern that, and these will all be on the Free Spirit website, and we'll try to post them on our website too. And when we have a free pattern, that is for the stores to use to help you sell the fabric. That's its whole purpose. So this one's called Wall of Fame. And this one was designed by Stacey Day, as was the Fave Dango quilt. <coughs> Yeah, don't pull off the stage. Tula, is this a pattern she has out? I'm sorry, Does what? she have this out as a pattern? Um, it's a free pattern for Free Spirit. Yep, also a free pattern. It's gorgeous. Can you turn that way a little bit? Oh, yeah. These will all be in the booth, too, in case you don't get a good picture or you get back to your room and realize that it was fuzzy or something, we'll have them in the booth. For sure. Booth what? 2716. And it is on the back of your catalog also, if you forget, along with all the distributors for all my products. What's the solid in that? It's dogwood. I knew it was dogwood. I use that one a lot. I know. And then I really like to help out um, designers. So this is by little known designer Julie Herman of Paper Quilts. <laughs> I wanted to throw her a bone, you know. I feel like no one pays attention to her. Um, but this quilt is super cool. And what, she, what Julie did here, and it's called Set Sail. It's all listed in your catalog also with the number, the pattern number. And what was really cool about this is she actually took the track flag print from the line and blew it up into a pieced quilt. Mm -hmm. So it's like a literal blown up representation of that print, which I think is pretty great. It's too bad she's not very talented. <laughs> She said, hey, should I do a quilt for this line? And I said yes, and then I heard from her three months later when it was done. So it was really collaborative. And, but the best part about it is that those of you who have been with me for a long time or have followed my stuff for a long time know that Julie and I have essentially been working together since the very beginning. So have Sarah Lawson of So Sweetness. And I have been working together from almost the beginning um, from it started out as making samples all the way into them having these crazy businesses that I'm now trying to jump on their bandwagon um, and ride their coattails. And so it was really cool that all of us together, for me, were a part of this, my 20th collection. Everyone who was there from the beginning, you know, when only four people bought my fabric, they actually liked it, so they obviously have better taste than almost anyone on earth. <laughs> and also, well, and then you can't forget 
Angela Walters, who quilt, has quilted every quilt I've ever done. And every single one of these, yes? Even the ones I didn't make myself. <laughs> yeah. So, Angela and I have been together from literally day one. We met in a McDonald's parking lot to exchange our very first quilt, and she quilted my quilt and then had your baby 12 hours later? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was so scared I wouldn't have a baby before quilt market, right? Yeah, like and so I was like calling her all the time. I'm like, yeah, I... I know you're about to have your baby, but how's that quote going? You're going to get that done before, right? 